involvement in public exposure in our continuing investigation of the foreclosure crisis, we're very fortunate to have Edgar Hall, an attorney who deals with, with uh, debtors on a regular basis who are dealing with foreclosure. Also, here in Washington State, go to the Attorney General's website. We're going to get that up on the screen and uh, encourage you to get some information. But first, this segment is about robo-signing and what it means to you. And there was a fantastic, fantastic piece done on 60 Minutes on April the 3rd, 2011. Everybody's got to see the entire piece, but we're going to play you a clip from it right now. And to find the, the strange signatures. One of the strangest signatures belonged to the bank vice president who'd signed Simoniac's newly discovered mortgage documents. The name is Linda Green. But on thousands of other mortgages, the style of Green's signature changed a lot. And even more remarkable, Simoniac found that Linda Green was vice president of 20 banks, all at the same time. Bank. All within the same week. I mean, this is a very, very active person. And you can Where did all those documents way. come from? We went searching for the Linda Green, and we found her in rural Georgia. She told us she's never been a bank vice president. In 2003, she was a shipping clerk for auto parts when her grandson told her about a job at a company called Docs, D-O-C-X. Docs, once housed here in Alpharetta, Georgia, was a sweatshop for forged mortgage documents. They were sitting in a room signing their name as fast as they possibly could to any kind of nonsense document that was put in front of them. Docs and companies like it were recreating missing mortgage assignments for the banks and providing the legally required signatures of bank vice presidents and notaries. Linda Green says she was named a bank vice president by Docs because her name was short and easy to spell. As demand exploded, Docs needed more Linda Greens. So you're Linda Green? Yes. Can't you tell? <laughs> Having seen the clip, Having seen all the Linda Greens that there are out there, is that for real? I sue Linda Greens, not her specifically, but people like her. Uh, when I left the creditor practice, that's exactly why I went to the debtor side, is because of this type of stuff that exists out there. You represented the bad guys? In a certain sense. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help it. <laughs> you I mean, represented creditors. Yeah, banks have, a, I mean, we're a nation of laws. You, you want to purchase that house, you want the money, the bank lends it to you, that's a fair transaction. Where it gets unfair is after it's been sold umpteen times and you have somebody signing 3,000 documents in a day saying they personally moved the document when it's impossible to. Well, yeah, and, and frankly, the, the poor woman Linda Green, the, the real Linda Green, was a woman who, who basically was a minimum wage person, was vice president of 20 banks. That was amazing. And actually, here's uh, 60 Minutes did a great job. They mm -hmm. actually, uh, here's some of the, the banks. Wells Fargo, HSBC, Bank of America, biggest banks in the country, all benefited from Linda Green's. Interesting. Interesting. By the way, if uh, I strongly encourage you to watch this 60-minute piece. It is available online. Go to uh, cbsnews.com. Search under 60 Minutes. This, again, was the next housing shock. It was April the 3rd, 2011. How serious is this problem? Uh, it, it's a mixed bag on the seriousness of it because typically when it matters to you, there's been some situation in life, either you've lost your job and gotten behind or something to where you're in default. Mm -hmm. But what they're doing, and this is the problem, is when you have a, a country of laws mm -hmm. and you say this procedure matters, like presumption of innocence before, you know, when they shortcut those processes, it hurts the system itself. And that's the problem with robo-signing is it hurts the system itself. But doesn't it hurt me? Do it I hurts mean, everybody. Does it hurt? Let's say that I were someone who was impacted by a, a robo-signed document, uh -huh. and I got behind on my payments. I mean, legitimately, I'm behind on my payments. Uh -huh. But the robo-signing aspect, they can't foreclose on me, can they? It depends. If you make the necessary objections, you obtain a lawyer, you identify the robo signing, you make, you know, you're successful in court. Yeah, then it, it can make that difference. Do all if lawyers you know about this? No. Just, just lawyers who practice in bankruptcy court, or are all I would say a lot of bankruptcy court, if not most of the bankruptcy attorney type uh, attorneys, know this type of thing. If you haven't received an industry training, it's a uh, it's a little difficult to know the ins and outs of it. Is a robo-signed document a legal document? Technically, once you identify that it's not, then it's, it's going to be considered fraud on its face. But if you don't object to it and you allow it to stand, then that 
could be considered legitimate. Hmm. They could ask you a political question about uh, how, uh, how we can bail out those who committed fraud time after time after time, but I won't. Instead, what we need to do is we need to go back to 60 Minutes. And in this clip that we're about to show, the, uh, we, they're talking with Sheila Baer, who uh, was the uh, director of the uh, FDIC, and the impact of robo-signing on our economy. There were a million foreclosures last year, and there will be another million this year. Those lawsuits are forcing open those bundled mortgage-backed securities that Wall Street cooked up in the mid-2000s, and they're exposing a lack of ownership documents all across the country. It's uh, astonishing to me uh, that this uh, became as pervasive as a problem uh, that it is. It got sloppy. It got very sloppy. Sheila Baer is one of the government's top banking regulators as chairman of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. You just described it as pervasive. Yeah, it is pervasive. It absolutely is pervasive. And it was just a matter of cutting corners, not spending enough money, not having any quality controls. Incompetent banking back then is causing foreclosure ghettos today. Although banks say the courts have been accepting their paperwork, now that's changing as desperate homeowners countersue the banks over the document fiasco. This leaves houses unsold indefinitely, undermining the recovery. I'm very worried about if this starts getting out of hand, the kind of impact it will have. These are lawsuits by homeowners yes, who yes. are being foreclosed upon saying... Yes, or have, are in the process or have already been foreclosed on. Saying yes. prove it. Yes, exactly. Prove yeah. that you own this. Exactly. How big an issue is that going to be? There are 30,000 well, today. I think, I think this litigation could easily get out of control, and we would like to get ahead of it. We're already feeling like we're falling behind it. Chairman Baer thinks rotten mortgage documents are so threatening to the economy that the government should force banks to pay into a massive fund. But you think there needs to be a cleanup fund? I do. Just it's like you would have a good word for, it, for yes. a natural disaster. Yes, somewhat like that. Yes, this is yes, this is uh, one of human making. But yes. <laughs> you don't want to give an exact dollar amount for this cleanup fund. But what are we talking about? Is it yeah. billions? It would be, be yes. I would assume it would be billions. Yes. Billions yes. of dollars. Yes. yes.